All right, so we're here to talk about catch basin and manhole inspections. And uh, these can be typically performed as part of a general field screening of your uh, municipal stormwater system. Or it could be incorporated into your um, uh, typical catch basin inspections. So you can modify your forms and have your crews that do the, the catch basin maintenance um, look for illicit discharges while they're doing that work. Um, it can also be used for source tracing if you suspect there's an illicit discharge and you want to narrow it down to a particular part of the system. Uh, maybe you get to a point where two branches of the system uh, split and you can determine if it's this branch or the other branch. Um, some very important considerations before you get started with a catch basin inspection are obviously to check the, the surrounding area, make sure that you're not close to a high traffic area or you're not endangering your own uh, health and safety by passing vehicles. Uh, brightly colored uh, field vests or jackets are good to have so that you're visible. Um, it's good to work in, in pairs of two, have a buddy system. You know, maybe one person could be doing the inspection and the other person could be a spotter. Um, it's also good to have orange cones and set those out. Um, think about bicyclists and pedestrians. They might be coming by. You don't want somebody to ride their bike right into a catch basin while you're inspecting it, obviously. Um, and another thing would be to uh, consider the atmosphere in the, in the catch basin structure or the manhole structure for uh, gases. Um, use a gas meter if you suspect you might have a, an explosive condition or something like that. Um, maybe you're near a gas station uh, where there could be uh, vapors or fumes that could cause a, uh, an unsafe condition in that manhole as you open it. Okay, so for, so we're actually taking a sample. Um, you can have a catch basin hook like this to uh, open the catch basin. Um, you'll want to be careful when you open a catch basin um, so that the lid doesn't fall in, obviously. Um, carefully pull it to the side. Um, and you can go ahead and do that. And then you want to um, make some general observations. Is it, is it, do you have flowing water coming out of the pipes? Any pipes into your catch basin? Um, are there any colors that are notable in the water that's flowing in? Um, you know, any, any odors, <coughs> petroleum odors or anything like that, or a sewage odor? You'd also want to look for things like floatables, um, toilet paper or, or any other kind of floatables. It could even be food waste. Um, think about potential sources in your area. Is it something that's coming from a restaurant or um, a loading dock where they spilled food materials as they were loading or unloading trucks and it's ending up in your, in your catch basin? Um, other things like sewage fungus or, um, or even a sheen, a uh, petroleum sheen in the water surface itself or anything that's coating the side of the catch basin like grease or anything that um, you know, it might indicate uh, an illicit connection upstream or an illicit discharge. So if you want, you can grab a sample with this critter getter okay. from the, uh, the flowing water there. And that was good. That was a good technique. You know, you didn't hit the side of the catch basin with the, uh, the jar itself, which could grab other sediments and stuff. We just want the water sample itself so we can take a good look at it. Um, this is a plastic bottle. I mean, you can see the water quality fairly well. If you have a glass sample jar, that's an even better way to do it. Um, you know, there's no smell to that. You can pass this around if you want. There's no... Um, I don't see any petroleum sheen or any floatables in there or any sediment really, but. It's mainly groundwater flow at this site, I think, so. At this site, mainly groundwater flow, so. If you have to enter a manhole structure, make sure that you consider, don't do it unless you have confined space entry training and you have a confined space entry permit. You know, if you feel the need to actually go into a manhole structure, 
That's why we use um, short sample poles like this or even the, uh, the window washers poles that are, that are telescoping. Those can go up to 20 or 30 feet if you have a really deep catch basin structure. So those are good in terms of uh, equipment to use. Um, it's also helpful to have your drainage system map with you while you're, while you're there. Um, so you can, you know, showing you the network and different branches and um, where, you know, potential land use, land use in the area that could indicate potential sources, um, maybe residential or commercial or industrial. Um, so that's about it. Do you have anything? Stagnant water, yeah, you want to be very careful when you're sampling. If you have water in a catch basin and you want to take a sample to evaluate it, you don't want to stir it up. You want to very slowly lower the sample container and then pull it up so you can visually assess it, see if there are any odors and that kind of thing.